Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing an interview with Peter. He's the founder of Wise Token. Um, I thought Wise Token was pretty interesting. Uh, they're launching, you have a big launch on Binance Chain that I wanted to go over, but I want to go over some of the the differences I saw um, with Wise Token. Are they really differences? Are they uh, fundamentally different or are they just for show? That's really what I wanted to, to kind of find out and get into. But uh, hey, Peter, how's it going? Hey, it's going good, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to start talking about this stuff. I'm sure it, it, it is pretty interesting. Um, if, before we get started, though, can you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself and sure uh, how you got into uh, blockchain in, in general? Yeah, so I am a uh, a former military intelligence officer in, in the U.S. Army. So I came from a military background. Um, I got deployed to Afghanistan in 2010. After I came back, I uh, after I came back to the states, I started um, I started I started a, a a business in in real estate and doing like Airbnbs and became an entrepreneur that way. And um, as I was looking for ways to invest for a family, I actually stumbled across blockchain while I was, while I was looking for investments in, in about 2016. And I, um, I thought I found actually blockchain technology before I discovered Bitcoin. And I thought blockchain technology, I was like, wow, this thing is really going to change the world. And then I discovered cryptocurrencies. I was like, oh, man, this, this could be the way for everybody to achieve financial freedom. And so I was all for it, but I was uh, super green at the time. And I invented, I ended up uh, losing all the money I had at the time to this passive profit platform that turned out to be a major scam. Um, and so that was my first asking, experience. What, what was it? What's that? What was it? BitConnect. Oh, 2016. Okay. And you oh, know, as, okay. as a new uh, as a new person who just discovered blockchain, I'm going on Coin Market Cap. They're like number three on Coin Market Cap. I'm like, these guys have to be legit. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're on Coin Market Cap, and you know, all the YouTubers talking about them. They're, uh, they're like, they're these. It's an algorithm. It's an AI algorithm. It it makes trades. I was like, sounds feasible. I mean, there could there's. I know there's AI for like the stock markets and stuff for trading. So. Um, so, and, and, and then, you know, I put some in, made some money and, I, and then I was like, oh, well, this is definitely real. And, and then that's where they got me because, you know, you put a lot in and then, and then they exit camped. So that's, that's the way it is. I learned really quick, not my keys, not my crypto, never give your crypto to a passive profit platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, that is true. It's, it's interesting. You, uh, it's really weird how you got into crypto. I think that's the perfect way to go from security or intelligence then into mm -hmm. finance finance you know with real estate and then into it i i came in from uh from being a financial advisor insurance and investments that's how i because I, I got I, I got into crypto like the like the bitcoin pizza i oh, uh, wow. i got um oh gee <laughs> well, yeah that's the thing but but i got out if i would have just 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 pushed myself a little further I bought a shirt for a friend of my, or for my, my kid and it said taking Bitcoin. I'm like, what is this Bitcoin? And then my son tries to explain it to me and I'm like, I can just print money on my computer. He goes, no, because it takes computer time and energy. I'm like the computer's on, dude. It's already using energy. <laughs> so I went through, I got the Bitcoin to buy a shirt and, uh, it was terrible. It took took me like a two days, you know. Um, and then I so I bought it. And I was like, well, that was that was interesting, but I'd never do that again. This is stupid. This is way too difficult. And that was it. And I I, I threw away the computer. Probably had ten or fifteen Bitcoin on it. Um, just you know, from the like the the uh, the dust from right, the purchase. Right. It was that it was that cheap back then. <laughs> but then being in a and had I been more had more of a security background. I would have seen a lot of the uh, the positives to it, but not until I started seeing, you know, stories about these you know sixteen year old, you know, kids that were making hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars from trading this, you know, Bitcoin for three dollars and six dollars. That's when I started to to think, well, oh, I can maybe I can I can see this is this is a, an asset. This is something that can be traded. I could oh, there's scarcity. Oh, I, okay, I get that. 
um, that you having come from, you know, the security end of it, especially with, uh, with government security um, into finance. That is, I think that's the perfect, uh, the perfect background to come into crypto. I just don't I, have. have. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy for the experience that kind of led me here. And um, I really have a knack for systems. That's, uh, that's what I like. So I, I like analyzing the systems as a whole. And to me, the best thing about cryptocurrency is the fact that after it's created and uploaded to the network, you can create 100% efficient systems that don't cost any overhead cost to run besides the user's transaction fees. So that's what blew my mind because I was like, wow, you can create these complex digital systems that are incredibly secure, unhackable, um, can't be altered so that, so you know they're going to do what they're programmed to do and it doesn't cost anything to just have it running on on a network i was like this is amazing because all our financial system is is a digital system but it's flawed because it can be altered and there's people that pull the strings behind the curtain and uh, change the rules but I saw blockchain as this amazing place where you can create financial systems that are sound and where you can't change the rules, um, like sustainable systems that'll last for a long time and that you know that your investment is gonna grow. So so that was what was super cool to me. And um, after, after investing in some projects and not really seeing what I wanted to see, I basically spent the next five years designing and, and, and developing Wise Token and uh, because I did it that way, like it's, it's way different than than anything else uh, else you'll see. Um, mostly because the basis was made on trying to create an asset back token. Uh, because when I saw when I thought about okay, so how can we translate financial systems onto blockchain? To me, the only way to do it is um, is is uh, is creating asset back systems. And so I'm not talking about like you know gold backed where there's like a third party custody that has some gold bars that are supposedly connected to the blockchain but actually like all uh all automatic all on blockchain the assets being crypt crypto assets that we already trust like bitcoin ether etc um so that so we launched um wise token on on, on ethereum in december and um the wise token on ethereum it's it's backed by ether and it has a price floor in ether and so the way we were able to accomplish that was through decentralized exchange technology because i was you know i had this idea since 2016 but the technology wasn't there to be able to create an asset backed system that doesn't require any third parties um it it, it just wasn't there until we had like uniswap for instance uh, because if you think, okay, so if I want to create this new token, WISE token, and I want pe the people buying in, I want their money to be protected in such a way that it's directly backing up the tokens that they just bought. How do I do that? There really wasn't a way until stuff like Uniswap came out. So now that Uniswap came out, most people use Uniswap uh, and you know the other Uniswap clones as investments. They're either providing liquidity investment tool but we swap more like a bank um, because one of the things that can be done with liquidity pools is that you can lock those liquidity pools permanently um, and so what we did is um, there's it was a it was a fair launch for our token distribution like I didn't get any wise tokens for free um, none of my team got them for free everybody had to buy it on the market so basically we held we held a 50-day auction to sell 50 percent of the supply uh, we actually raised 55,000 plus ether which is like $150 million now. Actually, it's more. Ether's gone up significantly. So like a big pot of all, Ether. All-time high significantly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we took, but then the significant thing is that we took that Ether and paired it with the other 50% uh, of supply, put it on Uniswap, and then sent the LP tokens to a burn address to permanently lock the liquidity. And so what that does, it means there's 50% of the supply that was bought by the community, you know, including me, I put, I, you know, I had to buy my own wise tokens just like everyone else. And then you got this big pot of ether 
sitting with the other 50% of the supply on Uniswap that's locked. So if anybody else wants to buy WISE, they got to buy it off Uniswap, which raises the price because they're putting their Ether in the pair mm -hmm. for uh, for the tokens or or you can sell it as well. And there will, all, you know, there will always be Ether there. And because we did, uh, because, you know, we sold 50%, then paired the money with the other 50%. What that means is uh, there's, there's a price floor because there's so much Ether in the pair. Even if everybody sold all their WISE tokens, even the very last person sold, there would still be 28,000 yeah. Ether in the pair. 50%. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, that is what I, that's what I was going to say. It's one of the things I, I liked when I looked at it that, that makes things a little bit uh, a little bit different. But um, on the launch, you launched as a nonprofit, or, and and how exactly does the nonprofit differ from more of like a just a different distribution and more of a like a regulated distribution like you're doing there? How does how does does um, having it as a nonprofit differ from something like that? So the typical launch, the, the typical project carries a lot of baggage into their launch. And by baggage, I mean that they've got seed investors that put money in the project and they are and they are promised money back or, you know, a big chunk of tokens back. You've got a founder that usually takes a good chunk, a good percentage of the supply, a team that usually takes a percentage of the supply. And you probably have seed investors and VIPs who are expecting to get an ongoing return from the profits of the project. So remember the the thing that was amazing to me about blockchain was the fact that it's a zero dollar overhead cost system. So to me, all that baggage kind of muddies the waters when we're talking about trying to create an, an efficient system. I wanted a, a system that is so efficient that it gives all the profits back to its users. There's no baggage being brought in by the creators. Um, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, created Bitcoin and then released it to the world. There's no tax that goes back to Satoshi and the distribution was fair. Any like at, at the beginning, at least anybody could set up your uh, a computer and and mine Bitcoin. And so those are the things that that I think make DeFi what DeFi is. And I don't think projects should take a big paycheck or a big cut from the creation of the project. I think that they should uh, have success off the success of the project that, that itself when they uh, when they are investors in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the project. So that's why, you know, the ether that came in, that got locked on Uniswap. That's part of the market. That's backing up everybody's value. And it's the same thing on Binance Smart Chain now. 100% um, of the of the BNB that comes in for a Binance Smart Chain launch goes to liquidity. And that's really important because the token wouldn't be backed by BNB if it wasn't. We, we like um, on Ethereum, for instance, our liquidity pool on Uniswap, the Wise ETH liquidity pool is. $370 million, yet our market cap is only $150 million. So I like, as far as I know, we're the only project that has a liquidity pool that's more than twice as big as its actual market cap. <laughs> Usually you find a market cap and then the liquidity pool is like 5% of that market cap. Like I said, uh, y'all, there are things I th that I found different about this project that yes, it, there, <laughs> it is very, very weird. If you could go over the reserve pools a little bit more, and and what about the airdrops that you're having? Okay, so we talked about the you, fro you froze up That's right the, when I asked the, the question. A project. You froze up right when I asked the question. Oh, I thought okay, you were just okay. staring at me. Right, but yeah, am I back now? <laughs> yeah, you're back. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so up to this point, we were just talking about the token itself. So, like the tokenomics of the token itself. But um, there's two other parts of the, to, to the ecosystem. One is liquidity providing, and the other one is lending. So there's the token. You can stake the token for up to 42 years and earn more of it with a contract. But uh, where it really starts to get interesting is liquidity providing and lending. And so liquidity providing is just you know providing WISE tokens and then something else, maybe uh, WISE B and BNB tokens or if you're on Ethereum, WISE tokens and Ether tokens, and then providing liquidity. And what we're finding is that there's partner exchanges that are very willing to pay high rewards for providing liquidity because they want you to bring money to their exchange so that so, so that they make the, the, the fees. 
So for instance, on QuickSwap right now on the Matic Polygon network, you can make over 100% APY on, uh, on, on wise pairs for adding liquidity there. And that's on top of the transaction fees as well. And wise tokens are resistant to impermanent loss when they're paired with the, the token they're backed by. So on Ethereum, wise ETH pairs, they, you don't get impermanent loss uh, because the prices move with each other. And on Binance Smart Chain, wise B and then BNB pairs, uh, you know, the prices move with each other. So you're not going to see impermanent loss like you do in other places. And so impermanent loss, that's the, the number one drawback for providing liquidity. So it just makes wise the perfect token to be able to uh, to provide liquidity. And then lending is the last piece of our ecosystem. And we actually haven't launched our lending contract yet. It's a behemoth. Uh, you know, it's it can do basically everything that Aave does, everything that Alpha Homora does, uh, lending cryptocurrencies, not just wise, like any cryptocurrencies, borrowing cryptocurrencies, uh, liquidity pool plays with leverage, without leverage, that type of thing. Um, there's really a huge demand for lending and borrowing crypto. Uh, we've seen the, you know, just a little over a year ago was less than $2 billion locked into DeFi. Now there's over $100 billion locked into uh, lending and borrowing protocols. So there's a huge demand. And so the way we're doing it is we're not, we're not just offering these services, but the profits that this contract creates from lending, borrowing, and liquidation they all go back to the users uh, who, who are who are holding wise uh, wise B tokens, and so that's where the airdrops come in. Um, we, we're trying to create a system that is a hundred percent efficient, gives all profits back to its users, and and I believe that'll give us a huge competitive advantage. When you're like, if you're going to borrow crypto, if you're going to lend crypto, you're not just looking at the rates now, but now you're looking at hey. Um, I, Am I getting free money on top of this from all the profits that are being given back to me? Um, so that's that. That's what we're creating, and I think that'll be the the number one value driver in in the years to come. Because just lending and borrowing is such a huge, uh, huge, hugely in demand uh, in crypto right now. You said getting free money. You're doing a, a, the only word I can do is buttload of giveaways um, on all these exchanges, and and and. Uh, in other ways, it's uh, you know, whether you're the, the biggest trader or just randomly. Um, can you go into some of all the giveaways that you're doing right now across? Everywhere? Sure. Yeah, yeah. We have been giving giving away a hundred dollars a day on Twitter. We did a ten thousand dollar giveaway for. We have a pre sale going on right now. There's five days left, and this is buying Wise B tokens. So, so in our pre sale, you can buy Wise B tokens. But in addition. There's over five hundred thousand dollars worth of BNB that's bounties that that are being given away. So there's when when you go to invest in the presale, you can choose a different mode, and that qualifies you for for additional bonuses. So like mode one is the super safe mode. It's just one percent instant cash back. So you know you you give a hundred BNB to buy your YSB tokens, well, you're going to get one BNB back immediately in the same transaction. But then there's other prizes for the different modes. And so you can compete for like $5,000 all the way up to the grand prize, which is $100,000 of BNB. And, uh, and, and, and so it's just gamified. You get to choose how, how you want to do it. You get your YSB tokens, plus you get to compete um, just because early whereas everybody else after five is just to buy it on and pay swap okay you froze up for at the end there but we got it i got it okay okay um you know, go over your 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 big launch on on binance uh, chain right now if you could yeah so right now we are we are raising as as much bnb as possible and it's ending in the next five days now the reason we want to raise as much as possible is because the bnb that that started uh right now this this is what's creating the massive liquidity pool and this is also what's generating profits to airdrop onto stakers a, a, as well so bigger is better because that just creates more interest and more of a snowball effect um, uh, for for the weekly airdrops that are happening for stakers, and so uh, not only do people get to buy uh, YSB at the at the base price, everybody else has to get on PancakeSwap, 
but there's over $500,000 worth of BNB uh, cash bounties that are being given out. So there's different modes you can choose from. So you're not only buying uh, WiseB tokens, but you get to qualify for these cash bounties. Um, there's like a super safe mode where you just get an instant 1% cash back, send 100 BNB to the contract, you'll instantly get one back in addition to your uh, wise B tokens, or you can compete for all the way up to $100,000 grand prize um, just for people who are participating in this pre-sale for the next five days. Okay. And that's the, the 11th? It ends on the 11th? Yep. It ends on the 11th. Um, that's eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, five o'clock Pacific Time. Um, and, 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 and it ends, uh, it's 0000 UTC time. Okay. That, that's, that's when it ends. All right. Um, yeah, that's, that's all the uh, things that I really wanted to take over. Is there anything else you wanted to hit on or talk about? You, you went over the, the differences that I thought yeah. were really cool. So, so I wanted to share the vision a little bit because th there's a reason why I paid for this out of my own pocket. And it's because I see five years down the road, 10 years down the road, DeFi becoming a place that is extremely efficient for the user. Um, because if there's a DeFi protocol that does the same thing as another one and where one takes profits to, to itself as a company and, and the other one gives it back to the user, it's just a no brainer to, to, uh, to use the one that is giving the profits back to the user. So I think that over time, DeFi is gonna get more efficient and more uh, user friendly and more focus is gonna be put on the user rather than just trying to make it like a traditional company where, where, uh, where, where they're raising companies you know, for the creators of, of that system. And so I'm trying to get two steps ahead of that to create something that is just not like, it's not even like 90% of profits, like 100% of profits go back to its users. We want to get ahead of this and grow a community base of people who believe in like the, what DeFi is supposed to be about, which is supposed to be financial freedom and, and financial sovereignty for the user, not about some big company being successful and, and uh, making money. Um, so, you know, we, we, we were talking about Ethereum, uh, we're like the number five pool on on Uniswap on on, on Ethereum. So we've already had such a big, um, like a big splash in the community. We have like ten thousand users and a lot of people who are pretty excited about the idea of a of a fair DeFi that offers a full uh, suite of, of financial products. So so we're pretty excited about it, and uh, we we'd love for you to participate in the in in the BSC launch as well. Because now we have these upgraded tokenomics where if they're creating real profits and Airbnb being airdropped onto uh, users every single week. Um, when I wanted to, to ask you, on the roadmap, when are you looking at, at uh, lending being offered? Oh, awesome. Yeah, we should go over that. So, um, so that's going to be Q3 to finish the contract. And I think Q4 by the time it's fully audited and ready to be deployed. Um, but, but in between those things, we have, we've got a couple other pretty amazing updates. One, a Changely listing, which is just allowing you to, um, uh, it's, it's Changely plus fiat onboarding. So people will be able to fiat onboard to, uh, to, to, you know, any crypto on Changely in, in including, uh, wise tokens. And we also have a big exchange listing in the next two months. So we've got a, a pretty back trap. We're also not just launching on Binance Smart Chain. We're, we're going to be on the Polkadot ecosystem as well. And probably Solana. We still have to check a couple of things about Solana. And uh, and and we also have uh, a partnership with a, the with a Casper ecosystem as well. So we're going through like an ecosystem expansion. Um, WISE is an asset-backed token. We've got WISE backed by Ether on the Ethereum blockchain. We're going to have WISE backed by BNB on the, on the uh, Binance Smart Chain. Uh, system and and we want one in every major blockchain so that eventually we can have like an index fund where you can have a one wise that is a piece of all the different major blockchains as as well um, so that it's it's about you know safety and uh, making it as as uh, secure and safe as possible because a lot of our 
people coming in are are new and and they and they are buying wise as like their first crypto so we want it to be a good experience and as safe as as humanly possible you know you said uh about DeFi becoming more um i want to use the word respectable because when it first started there was the scams and the rug pulls and it just they oh it blew up but being in crypto as long as 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 we have, you know, we've always talked about how, uh, like Gandhi said, I always use that that quote: first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, you know, then you win. Yeah. And it, the banking system never has really taken notice. It was all kind of ignoring and then kind of laughing, and not until DeFi became more respectable and more usable. Now I see banks is really starting to posture, you know, as really, uh, especially with uh, payment processors like PayPal and MasterCard and Visa kind of siding with crypto and accepting crypto as the future. And this is the way to go. Now I see it as more of the fighting time and banks really have. And I think that's all because of DeFi becoming much more, um, much more user friendly, much more <sighs> vital, you know, to uh it is I mean, with Bitcoin and, and, you know, other, other, other projects, they were, they were great at having sovereign money and taking control of, of your money. Um, but I don't think until DeFi really came around was where people were able to actually become their own bank, not just bank the unbanked, but become their own bank. That's when, when I think uh, banks really said, oh man, this is it. This is, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's such a big difference between putting your money in a bank account and earning like 0.06% interest per year. And then like, you can go to DeFi, you can even use stable coins. So you have no volatility versus the US dollar, get 20, 30% in some of these audited, you know, safe, smart contract protocols. Um, and, and that's just so significantly better than anything the, the finance 1.0 system can offer. So like DeFi is here and the infrastructure wasn't here a few years ago too. It's just recently come. And, uh, I, I think that's why we're seeing such a, such a flood. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a, it's a cool time, man. It really is. Well, uh, well, that's about it. Anything else you want to go over? No, that's it. But it was, it was Really awesome meeting you, Sean, and uh, thank you so much for for taking the time. Uh, this, is, this has been really awesome, and I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, it, was, it was great talking to you, Peter. Um, you guys, I'm going to include links uh, down in the description to get to everything. Um, remember, it's the 11th, um, the evening of the 11th, so you don't have like till midnight or anything if they're, you're in the U.S. or Canada um, to uh, take part in the, uh, the Binance uh, Smart Chain launch. You guys take care. I will see you all in the next video.